Hey everyone, Mike Mulligan here from Blind on the Move, and welcome to my video series from the field, Blindness Tools That Work. So I am a certified orientation and mobility specialist, so I teach people who are blind and visually impaired how to navigate and get around dealing with their vision loss. I am also a certified vision rehab therapist, so helping people with independent living skills, primarily in their home, and a big part of that is technology as well. And this video series is just to present different topics and products and technology that can be helpful, helpful for the blind and visually impaired community. And this video series is really just me chatting with you. So it's designed to um, be a way of just talking about different products like you were sitting next to me, kind of in a lesson format, um, how I would if I was interacting with somebody in person. So there will be some mistakes. Uh, I'm not going to do as much editing as I would for a normal video, but I just want to be able to talk about different things and explain them. And hopefully some of these things that I talk about will be helpful for you or maybe somebody you know if you're watching this for a friend or family member. Um, again, this is just an informal kind of talk but we're going to cover different topic areas each, each video. And today we're going to be covering three different topics. The first is signature guides. So signature guides are a pretty simple and easy tool, and I'll show you what those are and how they work. And then it's going to talk a little bit about telling time. So how can someone tell time if they can't read the clock? And then lastly, I'm going to go a little more on the tech side and talking about a new feature with chat GPT. So some of these AI things that are coming out that are coming out so quickly, it's hard to keep track of. But there is a function with chat GPT that I'm going to show you that I think is really helpful and convenient. So we're going to dive into it here. And again, I'm not going to do so much editing. So let's go right into signature guides. So a signature guide, I'm holding one up here in front of me and I'll flip the camera over in a little bit so you can see see this a little bit closer and in action but a signature guide is a credit card primarily there's different kind types and versions of them but primarily they are a credit card size piece of plastic or either or metal that has a rectangular cutout in them and these can fit in a wallet so they can slide right into a wallet pretty easily so they're easy to just have with you if you need them and these are really designed to help somebody who is struggling with signing documents. So you may have experienced this, that you're going to sign a document, maybe somebody grabs your hand, tries to put it in the right spot, and when you sign the document, it, you don't know how long to go, or maybe you're going up to the diagonal, to the right. Um, so that can be a challenge. So having a signature guide like this one that you can just pull out of your wallet or pocket um, can be really helpful for you as well as the person who's helping you line up where to sign. So if you have enough vision, you might be able to uh, do this without any assistance, but primarily uh, you people rely on someone with vision to help line up the signature guide. So again, this is a credit card size piece of plastic. Mine is black. There's a rectangular cutout kind of in the bottom third of it. And the way it works is it is placed on top of, like I mentioned earlier, on top of a document you're looking to sign. So let me uh, flip the camera around here and I'll show you how this would work if you had one and you needed one. All right, so I flipped the camera around and just for uh, reference, I use a little camper that I have in my backyard to do this filming. Uh, I don't really have any good place in my, my little house um, to do that, as well as I have a few young kids that make a lot of noise. So I got a little camper and that's where I am filming. So right now I am using the table and the camper as my uh, kind of backdrop. And in front of me here, I have a white piece of paper with, a, with that same black sin signature guide with the rectangular cutout. And I have it flat along on top of a piece of paper. So this is pretty simple and I don't think it will take too long to explain how these work, but I'm gonna write a little X and do a line here on the paper. So if you had a document you're looking to sign and you're not quite sure where to sign, or you're not sure how that you're gonna sign in a straight line, this is where the signature guide comes in. So if you're unable to see where to sign, you would wanna ask somebody, can you place my signature guide on where you want me to sign the document? So I have an X here and a line, I'm gonna place it down where the signature needs to be, and that lines up over the line and that way, if I were to sign and I was unable to see where to sign, I can feel where the rectangular cutout is. And normally I have people find that bottom left corner. So if I find that bottom left corner, I can get my pen there 
do my signature. So I'm signing across the signature guide. Okay, I felt the end on the other end of the rectangle. Remove that. Did a pretty good job of keeping it on the line. Most of the time your signatures don't need to be perfect, but this definitely helps with avoiding that going up or down or even going right and too big where you're going across the whole paper. So that is one option with the signature guide is having somebody place it down for you if you're unsure where to sign. But if you know where to sign and you have enough vision to locate it, you can also place this down. And because of the black on especially white paper, it gives some good contrast to give you kind of that area that you're looking to sign. So signature guides, they're all different prices, but a lot of blindness organizations give these out for free. Um, they're less than 10 bucks. I'll put a link in the bio. Hopefully that's helpful uh, if you're looking to get one through Amazon. But again, these you can find in a lot of different places. And I highly recommend at least having one in your wallet. You might not need it, but it's nice to have as a tool. So again, signature guides, simple, easy, cheap, uh, great option for signing documents in a straight line and knowing where to sign. So now we're gonna dive into the next topic. So I'm gonna flip the camera back around and get on to the next one about telling time. So I flipped the camera back around again. Now I'm sitting back on the bench with uh, the backdrop of a shade behind me. And now I wanna talk a little bit about telling time if you can't read or see the clock. So I have a quick story here. I was working with somebody uh, many years ago, but they were having a difficult time knowing what time it was before they got some services and some assistance. So this person would call the operator to find out what the time was. So that was something she was doing and it was definitely a struggle for her to have to do that all the time. Um, but once I had the chance to work with her a little bit and show her some of the options out there, I think it really helped her so she wouldn't have to just call the operator all the time. And when it comes to telling time, there are so many different options. I have a few um, demonstration uh, options here with me that I'll talk about, and I'll talk about some of the other ones too. I'll try and include, a, again, a few links in the bio of different options. Um, but again, if you're looking for some sort of talking clock or watch, connecting with the blindness organization near you is always a good option because a lot of times they have these pretty readily available depending on what you're looking for and what you need. So I have a few options here and probably the most common one that is given out uh, or that I have given out is a talking keychain clock. So it's a little, this one in this case is a little silver device made out of plastic. There's a little keychain ring on the top of it and there is a little screen that says, uh, has the time written on it. And then right below that, there's a rubber button. And if I push the rubber button, it will read out the time. So I'll demonstrate that here. It is 12.44 a.m. So I don't know how well you heard that. I'll push it, it again. It's 12.44 a.m. So it's not actually 12.44 a.m. It needs to be set to the proper time. Um, but I just wanted to show you as an example. So it makes it really simple. All you got to do is push that button on it, and it will tell the time. On the back, there are three buttons, and that's where you can adjust the hour, the, the minutes, um, as well. And I some have alarms. I don't know if this one does. Oh, it does. So it does have a alarm function as well. So if someone needs to set an alarm, they can do that. But again, pretty simple. People like it. They can just put it on their keys or some people um, will hook it onto a lanyard around their neck. And it's a great option. So the next one I want to show you is a really simple option. So for maybe someone who is older and starting to struggle with some memory loss, um, the, this type of clock can be, be really handy. So again, very simple. It is, in this case, it is just one giant white button on kind of a black base. So there is no actual written time on it. It is just a big button that can be left on a table uh, next to a person's bed maybe, depending on where they need it, or you can have a few. And all you gotta do, or whoever is using it, has to do is just tap the button. The time is 1.26 a.m. So 1.26 a.m., again, not the right time, but if really simple to use, push it. The time is 1.26 a.m. 
so it said 126 a.m. And if I push it again, the date is April 7th, Sunday. It'll also tell the date. So this could be really helpful for somebody, um, especially maybe with some cognitive issues who is having a hard time telling the time, but also knowing the date. Simple to use, uh, not much needed there. There's a little button on the back that's used to set it and the speaker's also on the back. So that's another option. I wanna show you kind of a more sophisticated option. This is a, another type of talking clock. There are four buttons on the top. This is more like kind of you would picture a kind of a nightside table uh, clock. S some people will put this near their medications. There's a lot of different uses for it, um, but it is a little more complicated because I'm going to show you the back here. On the back, there are different beep modes, voice, alarm, how loud it is. You can lock it so the time doesn't get changed, and you can also set different times and plug it in if you need it need to as well what makes this one unique is it's designed for rem pill reminders so remembering to take medication can be can be difficult for people and having an alarm that you can set to meet that need to remind somebody can can be great so on the top here of this this clock there is a green button for talk there's a red for uh, sorry, a blue for alarm check, a yellow for a light option to help illuminate the front screen, and then there's a alarm acknowledge button. So I'm not going to get into all the details of setting the alarms and things. I just want to show you another option of a talking clock. So I'm going to push that green button on the top. Good morning. The time is 12.50 a.m. Friday, January 1st. So again, all, I, all the person has to do is push that green button It'll read the time out loud as well as the date. So that's another option. And a few, um, a few other options that, I, that are available that I don't have demos with today are talking watches. So this is a really common way of people telling the time. So there's different types of talking watches. You can just push a button on the side. It will read the time out loud. Uh, and there's a lot of different versions. Some are quieter, some are louder. Um, but depending on a person's style, there's male, uh, men and women's watches. Another option that people are starting to use more are some of the smart home devices. So asking Alexa, for example, what time is it? Or um, whatever a home assistant might be like Google. And, and then there's also the option of using the smartphone. So if somebody in this case, you know, would ask, <laughs> I don't wanna say her name, she might mess up my recording, but S-I-R-I -I, to at the time, It'll, it will read the time out loud. Um, you can use voiceover as another option. So there's so many ways to tell time depending on a person's technology that they're using, what their needs are. So again, just some examples of talking, talking clocks and ways of telling time if you're unable to see a standard uh, regular size clock. So. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the tech. So, so now we're gonna get into more of the tech. So now we're getting into the high tech side of, so now we're getting into the high tech side of this video. So I'm gonna talk about chat GPT. So for those of you who haven't heard, it is a AI system that I'm gonna pull up on my phone that will use my camera of my phone and I can ask it questions like I'm having a visual assistant next to me for a conversation. So I'm just gonna do a little demonstration here in my backyard. There are a lot of use cases for this, but today I just wanna talk about it describing a scene. A scene is something that it is pointing at and being able to ask it follow-up questions for answers to my questions. So I'm gonna pause the video here cause I gotta get out of my, my little camper here and get to a place where I can demonstrate that function. Okay, so I've made it out of my camper and I'm gonna talk a little bit about ChatGPT here and how you can use the camera and the visual mode to get a description of a scene as well as a lot of other things depending on the prompts you give it. But for this video today, I'm just gonna be talking about its scene description and how that can be helpful. So I'm gonna give a little scene description here first and then we'll see how well ChatGPT does or it might even do better than me. In front of me here is a swing set. This is in the little back corner of my yard that my girls like to play in. 
and there is a kind of a bigger kid's swing as well as a baby swing and then we set up a little wooden thing in between for them to stand on it has a green frame there's a wooden bench in the in the left side of this frame i have a little white pla kind of plastic fence and there's a ladder and then the back of the camper as well as a hose on the ground so with chat gpt i'm gonna pull it up here in a second but i just want to talk about it a little bit is to use this function as the time of this video you need the premium subscription so i'm paying about 20 bucks a month for the premium subscription which is a little bit high um, but i use it for a lot of different things um, and it's pretty nifty it might be uh, worth at least trying out to see if it would be helpful for you so with it once you open the app so i'm you holding up another phone i've opened up the chat gpt app there's a button in the bottom right i haven't clicked on that yet because when i do it'll probably start talking to me so i don't want to do that yet but when i tap that there will be some different options there's a speaking assistant where you can just have a conversation with chat gpt but then there's also a video icon that i'll tap on that way i can ask it questions about what it's seeing so let's do that and i'll just show you it in action here what's in front of me all right i got you it looks like you've got a green metal swing set in front of you it's got two swings hanging from chains and there's a smaller green bucket seat on the right side which is probably for younger kids the frame is standing on a grassy patch and there's a white fence behind it pretty classic backyard setup do you see any benches Yes, just off to the left of the swing set, there's a wooden bench with a decorative backrest. It's right up against that white fence, and it looks like it's in a cozy little spot. Perfect for hanging out and watching the kids swing. Is there anything on the ground? You got it. Right in front of the swing set, there's a garden hose lying on the ground, kind of looping around. And the grass looks a little worn in front of the swings, which is pretty typical from all the swinging action. There's also a little patch of concrete or stone in front of the swing set area. It's a fun, slightly messy backyard scene. I don't know if whether I should be happy or offended by that conversation, but it is a good example of how this can be descriptive. And depending on the questions I ask, uh, it could do a good job of describing the scene to me. So this is just a short example. Uh, you really need to try it out to get it, the experience of what it can do. It can also read signs, help tell you if you're getting closer or farther away from an object, help you find something potentially you lost. So I recommend trying it out. And it's uh, something new that I've been playing with and showing some people that I've been working with. So that's ChatGPT and their little visual interpreting mode. So again, I definitely recommend checking it out. And now I'm going to head back into the camper, give a little conclusion to this video, and talk about what's coming up next. All right, so I'm back inside the camper now, and I'm hoping this video was helpful, kind of covering some different topic areas. So this is kind of a new format for me as a way of presenting information. I'm hoping to provide some basic skills as well as more high-tech, up-to-date things that are coming out in the technology world just to keep people up to date in that area. And if you have any thoughts or ideas of little topics I should cover, I'm happy to do that. There's quite a bit out there. Um, so it's gonna be kind of a mix of different things depending on uh, kind of what I'm feeling for that day. Uh, talk about and present to you all. So this is the first video of hopefully many coming down the line. My goal is one every week, but I'm not always the best at following through on that because of all the life situations going on. But again, this is the first video and there will be more. So thank you for joining me today and for all the follows and everything you've done to support me through this. And hopefully these videos will be helpful for you or somebody you know in learning more about what tools work in the blindness field. And again, a lot of these are things that I've worked with people directly on. So this is from hands-on experience working with people as an instructor who's been doing this kind of work for 10 plus years. So hopefully some of that experience will also translate into these videos and maybe provide some new tips as well as some information that you might be unaware of. And have a wonderful day. And until next time, see you later.